Yep. All right. So this is Danny Coy, one of my good friends, amazing hair, wig designer, stylist, the best person to have on your team. Uh, when you work in wardrobe and costumes, you want to have someone you can trust and be able to be honest with and give notes or collaborate with. So you could have a better teacher tonight. So, so as you guys probably, well, I don't know what you guys know. So I'm just going to go very basics. Um, I work really closely with Gail, the costume designer, you know, so she will basically give the inspiration of the overall design. And then she'll call on a buddy like me to uh, figure out hair, makeup. It depends on what you do. Normally, in the design aspect of the the realm, it is hair and makeup kind of sort of the same thing. And then if I want to find a makeup person to come in, we'll do it that way. Um, so then I create looks so we can either draw them out, sketch them out. Uh, Gail and I are really good at just winging it. I mean, she's like, you know, do something with this curl. And we're like, great, awesome, let's do it. Um, so I'm going to give you like the basics of wearing a wig. It's, it's, and the different types of wigs there are. Um, I love my job because I don't have to actually talk to anyone. I can just talk to a wig head. It's really great actually. Um, so the first thing you would have to do is, has anyone worn a wig? Anyone? No, no one knows. Okay. Even for fun? Uh, Saturday. Okay. Well, a little different. These are a little bit different, but we'll, we'll, when we get there. Um, so I have my beautiful little mannequin. Um, so I did a bait. You can't really see me at all. Oh, so we did pin curls. So a pin curl, I'll take one out so you can see, is basically taking a section of hair. So if you do get a Broadway show or any type of show like that, you will be expected to do your own wig prep. Uh, so you take your two fingers around the section of hair and you're gonna wrap it around twice and stick a little piece in between, put it on the wig head and twist it down. Uh, so the bobby pin, uh, does anyone know what the, uh, there, uh, the tang is for, that little piece that goes up? It's to show you that that's supposed to go down so that it doesn't get hooked on anything. Most people put the ridge end up and if you have questions, you can stop me too, or I can blabber for hours and hours and hours. Yeah, uh, one thing you guys want to know, the reason he's been curling is to flatten your own hair so the wig doesn't stand oh. up on me. So if he's trying to get your own person, something that has really long hair, really thick hair, it's a way to kind of pull it in so it's um, less noticeable. Yeah, we really want it to be as close to the head as possible. Sometimes you'll have to wear a microphone in the head so that makes them look like aliens, which we don't want that. So I did five pin curls. Um, I did kind of a beauty prep, so it's a side with one pin curl, two pin curls. I do have a worksheet I will send to Gail as well that has this if you really need to see it. And then two over here. And then I did two in the bottom because these are where our anchors are. So I'm gonna put a wig cap on it. And a lot of um, performers have to do that themselves to kind of prep their own hair for the wig. Yes, so all of this is like, oh, they're done by themselves. Right, Gail? Uh, we learned last week or Tuesday that a bobby pin comes from the 20s when women bobbed their hair. That's why it's yeah. called a bobby pin. Oh, look at you guys. I'm so proud. A little history, a little history coming at you. Aww. Um, do we know why wigs were invented? Oh, wigs were invented question. in the uh, Egyptian era because they would have diseases on their head. So they would make uh, wigs out of tar and feathers and fur and to make um, for the heads. So it was basically, people would have like scabies and nymphs and their hair would just fall out because they didn't have the proper shampoos, conditioners as we do today. And they would just shave off their diseased hair and yeah. put a wig on? Put a wig on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is the wig prep. Pretty simple, right? In like a shake and go wig, right? Y'all, you, you like a hard front? No? Mm -mm. Um, it means the hairline. We're talking about the front of it. It's can either be um, your own hairline has like oh here very we go. hairs, and if it's machined sewn, it's just a very so, hard. So here's edge. like a hard front, is what we call it. Um, so it has basically there's no lace attached to it. So this is just a this is a, a human hair. It is a religious wig, actually, technically, but we're just gonna call it yeah, nice, and it's human hair. Um, it's around $2,800 just to buy it off the street. Um, yes, hard front. Um, and then we have, I think you might be more, 
um, lace wigs. So in like theater, we would use a lace wig. From scratch, you would totally ventilate the whole thing. Ventilating is pulling one hair at a time through the lace. It's so much it's fun. It's like crocheting with hair, real hair. Yes. Crocheting on a very small, like it's a rug, just very small. That's why people would get fun of for their rug looking really bad. I, I doubt you've ever heard that expression. Um, so I'm going to put the wig on my beautiful model. It's going to be great. And now she looks like, yeah. So with <laughs> full lace wigs, you can um, get more natural with them. You can actually copy the client's hairline. You can really get it more natural looking. This is made for obviously a man's head and she has this little bulbous of a head. Um, it was custom colored. It was for a stunt double, different realm for you guys, but still it's a wig. It's a beautiful wig. That's one. Um, then Can you explain how do you wrap someone's head and measure their hairline? Measure, oh, uh-huh, copy you. Uh, it's just like costumes, that. wigs have to fit. So if it doesn't fit your head, it's not gonna sit and look real. So that's a big thing about custom doing it. He'll meet an actor and have them. And we'll have a, a bubble created. So here's a, a bubbled block. Sorry, as I everything falls apart. Um, so here you can kind of see the outline of the bubble. I, I should get more. Um, <laughs> guys just don't, let's see. So we'll make a, I'm trying to find mine to be exact, but anyway, um, here. We'll, little, like, brand wrap around your head. <laughs> okay, like so here's Jim Gaffigan's bubble. So he has a huge cranial <laughs> crane. So we basically put a uh, bag over their head and take tape and go all the way around it. Like- so it's really tight. Like, so it's really tight. So we get a nice tight form. If you can see the different colors that I used, uh, for this wig in particular, since he is balding and we wanted to make a swirl for him. So just a little top piece. So I drew in his whole entire top section and then for the wig itself, he wanted to have a side part. So I drew that in. I don't even know if you can see that because it's so. Uh... Yeah. It's kind of like a pattern for a wig, really. Yeah, it, it, is, basically, it is the pattern. So let's just say, ooh, we taped it down. <laughs> so then. Because everything I... we do is 3D. It makes it, it's just so much different than doing something flat. You know, we have to make it 3D and fit and look good from the front, the back, the side, all the above. Right. It, it's basically we're making a pattern. We're making a, like the, the cut it out. People use cork. People use paper. If you really want like a solid heavy one, they'll use paper to do it. Um, so that's really the... And then on this is where we have... Gosh. Da, 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 da. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm... You can see all his great supplies behind him. He has a really nice work room. Um, everything fingers reach you know he you never know what you need so it's you never know and i have enough for like three rooms it's really great um so right now i'm actually taking um a machine wefted back and i am fronting it and topping it if that makes any sense so i took off the top and i took off the front so as you can see i laid down my lace on it and i sewed it down by hand on each side because we want to make sure we get the sideburns to really show the, the realism of the wig. And then I would turn this right side out and then I would go and I would ventilate for about, I don't know, eight, nine hours to get it done. But I'm pretty quick. Other people can take like days. I'm like, how long do you take on a wig? Um, so does that, any questions there? Comments, queries, concerns? So I kind of think to understand that a little better, the back of the wig is machine sewn in that hair. So it's not as realistic. The front that's going to be like on camera or up close, he's hand doing. It's like doing it, you know, custom doing it. So that's why he's probably saving time and money by using half a wig that's already machine, you know, whipped together. Legit. Legit. Yeah, so and that's like to, to be honest, it's uh, who sees the back really. Um, so that's really the... The, the major point of fronting a wig, we call it in the, in the industry. Um, I can show you, oh my gosh, everything's falling. Okay, great. Um, Just like the costume shop, everything is always Everything's everywhere. everywhere. It's great, we make it happen. 
Um, so this one was fully ventilated. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on so you can see the um, hairline, right? Well, that, that'll be very beneficial. Um, so for a male prep, we love to use a beauty band. Uh, this is my own personal wig, so you guys are getting like a real, real class now because, uh, and this is old as dirt. This wig is over 20 years old, just to let you all know, I'm old, so... That's yeah, great. But you can um, base the wig on so it doesn't just slide off. You have to pin it in. Yep. So it's you're going to have pin curls. I would do some pop clips as well, but we're I'm showing you for the, I'm going to pin it as well so you can see. So when we put on a wig. Ooh. Hard to do by yourself, kind of. It I mean, really is. Not going to lie. Life is really difficult sometimes as we're dealing with right now. Okay. So I just want you to see my grandma hairline I have and how it cut it 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 there it is it's my hairline Ooh. does that make sense so it's not just a straight line it's not just a hard straight line it's very you know um, so it's, it's very custom so I literally I um and if you look at your own hairline you can see like where it goes in now yeah I'm gonna can you see like my hair my my green hair compared to the yellow hair boop 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 very interesting i know this is like watching paint dry um great um but then you know you actually have some hair you can do something with um does the hairline make sense so it's hair done one hair at a time i want to show you some more hold on i had everything laid out for you all i just want to let you know this so my clean one thing that is really good too is um he'll ha often have to match someone's hair so color becomes really important about you know, he can take different shades of, um, we talked about hues and shades of actual hair and mix it together as he's custom making it to kind of lighten or brighten or, you know, intensify, make something more saturated. A lot, especially for, for what we, okay, I can take this off now, right? Great. Um, so with stage lighting, we really have a problem with hair color turning to red because um, I love lighting designers. I do. But they put a lot of red on stage and it and oranges and yellows to like brighten up things. And what that will do, that will make hair look very, see how it already, just from this lighting here, it's turning it very, you see the, the warmth to it. It's very warm. So what we need is a very ash wig. So we basically dip all the wigs in RIT dye because it's green, green RIT dye. So we can give a nice coating on it. Just, you can tell the difference of color like, see how warm, it's just so warm. So we would actually work with them and with the costumes that it kind of counteracts, or if they look sickly, we'll have to warm them up a little bit. Um, or if we need to make them a blonde. Oh. Sometimes in the script you have to, like they really want a blonde, but then they don't cast a blonde. So, uh, you know, it depends on the actor or actress and that's where makeup comes in too. <laughs> you have to kind of make it work and try to, you know, it, hide some sin and yeah. accent you know, other parts. Or they do Miss Saigon and, every person has to be a blonde at the last number. So it can be very um, challenging. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to block a wig so you can see how we block wigs so that you can um, just understand that this is what we do. Uh, people who are not. Uh, yeah, they don't come styled usually. No. It's all, you know. They you come in a bag. Um, they normally come in a bag like, like a Paul Huntley would give me. Um, here, we'll just use it. All right, so this is a Laverne Cox wig. Um, so she loves a ton of hair in it. So it's a little bit raggy, but we're gonna... Okay, so when we put the wig on the block, we're going to want to use our middle line as the center. If you can even see the middle line. Yeah. All right, so then I'm going to take my two big pearl heads and stab myself in the finger. And then my, I have to, my, my job is to keep this lace as long as I can. That's the, that's the, the key. Um, okay. Well, I don't have water clothes. Oh, no, I do. I do. Oh, guys, I'm, I'm a professional. <laughs> I mean, one of the main reasons we use wigs and shows is to keep the hair style consistent. Yeah. And so so <laughs> that, to control it. Um, continuity, continuity, continuity. Uh, so, like, if you saw um, 
fan of the opera when it first came out like 30 years ago and you went back like this week, yes, you would see a different wig, but the style would still be the same unless they did a revamp, which I don't think they have. So it's all about continuity and also to save our actor's hair. Um, so I'm starting with two pins in the front. Why two, you ask? I have no idea. I started on Broadway doing it that way and they said to do it. So I've been doing it my whole career. Um, and then I go around. I'm pulling the lace. The lace is so good you can't see it. Um, so it, it, is, it is there. I'm coming in. I'm pulling it around. I mean, one thing you don't want to do is stretch the lace, you know, if you're handling it so much and it gets waffly. We talked about like certain fabrics can kind of like spandex. If you pull on it, it'll get that, that potato chip waffle. Way. You don't want that to happen to the wig because it'll sit that way on the person's face and they'll want them to cut it and have a nightmare scenario. <laughs> yeah, no cutting lace. And this lace is really short, guys. Like I'm I'm a firm believer on lace to like right above the eyebrow for, for um stage. But because I've transferred over to TV, we have to cut it all off and I want to kill myself. Um, I mean that in the best way possible. Uh, so I came down and I'm going to do the corner of, of it as well. Um, another reason why we do wigs is actors can play more than one character in a show. Especially nowadays, uh, they don't want to hire a ton of actors. So they will you know, just get them another wig, you know, and they can play like four or five different characters per show. And then if it was like Big Fish, they were playing 20 and 30 people in a show. And we had... That's oh. why it's so important to like, you know, nail that wig and if you've got a hat on there and you're dancing, you know, it's so important that you have a good prep that if a wig has to come on and off that you know how to do it and that's oh. not going to be falling off or sliding down or something. Yeah, they... Mm. Hats are the vein of my existence, so sometimes we use have to get creative. We'll use magnets if it's like really quick change, or if it's, um, or if the actor just can't handle it if it's on stage. Um, so for like to, to Bountiful, there they she had a hat on and she put it like on stage, ninety year old person putting on a hat. Mm. Yep, we would cry every night because it's going crooked. Can you see what I'm doing? Because it's totally off camera. And magnets are tricky too. We did a show where they sewed in and upside down, so the polarization didn't oh, work. Oh no! And and you're like, we have the magnets in there. What is going on? You know, so you have to really investigate and try to stay calm and get it all sorted out. I, magnets are really, <laughs> they're difficult, but they work really well. You know, so, it, yeah. like if you can get I them know. to work, it's it's it is quite amazing. Magic. Um, Broadway magic. So that is blocking the front of the wig. So what that's going to do is that's going to lay our lace nice and flat. And that's really what we want because around the hairline, around the face, this is the illusion. This lace is the illusion. With a hard front, you kind of see where it starts. So with a lace wig, it's bringing the illusion of the eye down lower. So it starts down here. And then when they look at what is supposed to be like horrible, horrible, horrible is now beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Crazy, right? So then I take my big pearl heads and I pin down the back. Uh, so if we were to make a wig from scratch, it would be about 90 hours to sit there and ventilate the whole thing. Um, it's really not fun. Uh, so you just watch something really good or listen to some good podcasts now. When I started, podcasts were not a thing. So I would just have to watch a show. I watched Law and Order once and I almost wanted to like jump out the window because it was all like, you know, bad subjects. Um, I know, Gail, I'm sorry. I'm not being professional right now. I'm trying. <laughs> I was going to say watch Gone with the Wind or some great historical. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like no. five months long. No. Um, so, yeah. So that is blocking a wig. So every wig needs to be blocked at the end of every show, unless you work at Pittsburgh CLO. Um, so we will have, uh, I did for, um, for like Patty the Pwn Gypsy, I had 22 wigs to do at the end of every night. Um, Big Fish, there was 47 wigs per person. There was four, five hairdressers for that show. Um, so we all had a ton of wigs to do every night and style them and put them in rollers. So roller sets is another huge thing that we do. 
Um, so many, when I say roller sets, roller sets. Um, most people don't know why we use roller sets. It's truthfully for continuity, that we can get the same result every time. And that's what we want. We want the same curl in the same spot in the same place. You know, like with your curling iron, how you finally get it to like that right. Oh yeah, no, this is this is where it needs to be. Um, same thing with the roller, you know. Uh, you really want to keep them as the same as possible. Um, we have a Bible as well. I'm sure you've heard of a, 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 a wardrobe Bible, a costume Bible. Um, so we have those as well in the wig world. And what that's going to do is that's going to show us exactly where all of our rollers are placed. Question. So you said it in between every show? Basically every show you would. Um, if and it's a two show day, you can kind of get away with just pushing wigs back into place. But some wigs you, you have to set it every show. So then you would put it into a wig dryer to dry. So you would mist it with some water and then you would um, have it dry. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, there's human hair and then there's synthetic hair. So there's two different types of... of um, Let's call them fabrics since it's a, a costume thing. So we would need like, this is synthetic. It's plastic. So what we do is when we set this wig, we'll be using a steamer to melt it around the rollers and that will actually lock in the set so that you can get more wear and tear out of it, to be honest. Um, you know how you it's see- It's the same kind of steamer that we used in the costume class. The kind, mm -hmm. you know, the big old- Jiffy. Big old Jiffy. I have, it's, it's right, it's right over here. Um, do, do you want me to steam a wig? No, no it's okay. But um, I just want to point out too, ladies, just the uh, head form he's working on. Usually there's a wig stand that it goes into so it doesn't fall over oh, all yeah, the time. It's down here. Yeah, so you can like manipulate it and, and pull against it so it's not falling over. Sometimes yeah. you find yourself stuck somewhere without good supplies. You might have a styrofoam head and it's a nightmare to work on styrofoam oh they, those they are... fall over so whatever money you can put into your supplies it's always really it helps you yes i i yes because they have clamps some that clamp onto the table they have clamps this one goes to the floor like the two i've been using here in this little demonstration um so yeah so that is the the basics of like your tools you would need i love a wide tooth comb always a good handy thing um, even for your own personal use, so you don't get snarls, you start at the ends of your hair and work your way in so you don't get knots. Um, and then we have our Scout Master wig brush. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a heavy duty brush with metal prongs and it can really get through all of the hair and really smooth out the hair or rake the hair, whatever your heart desires. Um, Cutting wigs and styling wigs is really up to truthfully the designer, and we would get our inspiration from the costume designer. Um, let's see if. Um, so or, often, if Danny's doing a show, he will go like through, like I would go through uh, our stock or purchasing. He would do the same thing, like try to collect, see what he has. It's the right color, the right lengths. Yeah, and then I have. Customize or doesn't have, you might need to build, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, so my stock um, is hanging all above me. Um, so it goes all the way around my studio, literally. Uh, there's about like 900 wigs and then I have drawers and drawers of wigs and hair. So it's whatever they want. Um, for TV and film that I've been working on a lot more, people have been, oh, do you happen to have this wig? So then they kind of call me and I'm like, yeah, sure, I have one. And then I make it happen and then I get it to them. Um, and it's pretty much like costumes. You never really have exactly what you need. There's always a process of like, oh, if I change this or tweak this, I mean, and the same thing, you doesn't want to cut them all short, then it'll have no long wig. So you have to be careful, you know, safeguard your good stock if you have like some beautiful long wigs. Yeah, like this one, for example, this one was actually really long. I'll bring it back. Maybe this is better further back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's great. So this was like down to here basically. And of course the actress had short hair and we had to match her because she was dying and she didn't want to live, uh, she didn't want to die basically. <laughs> so we had to make her a stunt double wig and this is what I made for her. Uh, she did have an ash color to it. So it really did work well. If I wasn't on my iPad, I could show you photos, but yeah. So even just on here, you can see the blonde with I did a nice root so that it blends in nicely for her. So I think it came in pretty well. 
I enjoy it. I have fun. <laughs> and sometimes they'll do like maybe they'll use the actress's own bangs in front, and then there'll be a fall that kind of gets added in. So a fall has in the back. Colors and... Oh my gosh! Yeah, if they want to use their own hair, um, they there there's a bump. So make sure you you uh, put that in your contract. I hate saying it, but but it because your hair does get through it. You know, eight times a week, going through the same style every time. If wigs are not already purchased in the budget. Um, it can be quite mm, a lot of stress on your own hair, if that makes sense. Um, and then, like, I mean, we can... I I'm showing you bob wigs right now for some reason. I had to cut all my wigs for this last show, so... Um, what was the show? Um, Lincoln Rhymes, Hunt for the Bone Collector. On Hulu, if you want to check it out, on NBC, on Hulu. Um, Yay! Cool. <laughs> yeah, good old Hulu. Uh, now that they fired everyone, it's great. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, I that's what I have about being a freelance um, designer. Yeah, it's it's really it's really stressful. I won't lie. I was off for two months, and then they said no more working anywhere. So my two pilots went away. Um, we have no idea what's going on in life. It's great. But normally you would like kind of have the show lined up and you would like go around. So it's still crazy. You still have to bring your own tools. They do rent them from you. This is very close. Let her just sit there. Um, so all of my kit, like, I have a full kit from, I mean, everything you could possibly think of. Um, products. So you try to get product sponsorships from people. You try to really have everything someone could possibly ask for. Uh, most of the stuff that is not specifically for a show that goes beyond your basic, like, makeup, so to speak, you would be responsible for. Um... Unless they get a huge, you know, max sponsorship where they give you, you know, foundation or eyeshadow or something like that. Um, facial hair is another big thing that we do um, a lot of That's it. That's very custom too. That has, can't just be like slapped on. It has to match the hairline and match if it's a beard or something or a mustache. Yeah, so there's a lot. I mean, same thing like a wig. It does take a long, I know, like it takes... The same amount of time because it's basically another hairline you know like top hairline front hairline back hairline all these hairlines so can I, this would be the part where i'd pass it around the classroom so you could actually see can you can feel it does that make but no. the next phrase you know you wow. don't look at me i wanted to look at the thing <laughs> helpful right this, and it's white that's great danny you really you know how to do this um okay here's fantasia's wig Ooh. um you could what was probably, that from um um what was it um what the hell she do mm, um after midnight where's the thing yeah so can you there you go so as you can see we can do oh. one hair at a time to really make it look absolutely perfect and then you can kind of see inside the pattern. So let me turn it inside out so you can see how we took our bubble. So you can see almost the darts around the neck area. Oh, yeah. That's like oh, that's yeah. how we the costume. You kind of pinch out the extra fabric so it's the shape of whatever you want it to be on. Yep. Same, exactly the, darts. the same way, you know. And then we had to front it a couple times because she was a little rough with her wig. Um, and then you can kind of see, remember how I was saying that there, we cut out a part so we could put better lace, well, we put better lace in the part so that the part looks really pretty. If, oh my gosh, come on. Did you make that one? I did. How long did it take you? Uh, me personally, what was it? I had four wigs going on at once, so, mm. Mm, I'm, I'm going to say a week. Wow. I'm going to say a week with like splitting that's it up. Um, that's pretty fast. People... That's why they're expensive too. They're so labor intensive. You know, it's not a couple hours. It's like, you know, 10, 20 hours or something. Yeah. It. Okay. That's better. Now, so you can see how we can come in and really make a parting. Um, I don't know if you guys are all up on the different types of wigs on the market now. A lot of the... Is that, does anybody even see? Am I helpful at all? Yeah, no, we can see it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, dark hair. Um, but did you, if you notice how little hair there is, 
because it's going to make it look more natural. You know, unlike some of these other wigs that have so much hair in them. Um, they look like a hat, almost. You know. Yeah, they're almost like helmets with some fringe. So we kind of, I, I love to, like, you can see right through it. So it's more natural. You can see everything. And you just, it's a costume with extra fabric on it. Um, so we do a lot of the fronting. Um, I know we said that a couple times now. So to give you another example, here is a machine made back. So same thing as this one. Oh God. Mm -hmm. Hairs everywhere. So this is just for a like a period set where you would want to have hair all over where the tracks would you would see the tracks in it. Um, but then as you can see, here's the front hairline with my darts. Huge darts, huge darts, and thin so that you can see through it. Hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's my life. <laughs> One thing hard too, like the costume department, maybe I have a hundred costumes. Danny might have, you know, 15 wigs, let's say, but he'll often um, have to schedule the actors. You know, they can't all come in at the same time. So I'll have to kind of figure out if they have 30 minutes to get ready, they'll have a schedule You're every five minutes, you know, someone getting into a wig. Yeah. Um, I would hire a crew. He'll hire his uh, hair crew. There's certain rules with a union too, depending where you're working, you know, they, uh, the hair people are not supposed to touch a costume and the costume people are not supposed to touch the wig. So nope. sometimes you'll have to have like three people on a quick change, each one doing their specific, you know, choreographed part to keep it going. And then you'll even have mics in there too, just to make things more fun. Um, but yeah, normally and we do. Too, so it'll be like 20 hands, right? <laughs> <laughs> and go. Um, <laughs> and hopefully everyone knows their job. Like if someone is, um, Lacks a daisy on their job. It can really like put stress on the actor. And as a wardrobe hair person, our job is to really make them feel like the part so they can go do their thing. Um, a lot of actors that I worked with, you know, we don't, I really never talk about hair unless it's wrong. <laughs> um, Vanessa Williams, she, uh, her swoop has to touch the tip of her eyebrow if we ever do a swoop or a period show. And she, be, and she would just, she'll just point not rude. She just point like, oh, okay, yeah, let's just bring it down. So like, there's just those little things that working with, you know, talent you need to be aware of. Mm. And as much as like costumes, I know you got your hands and you're fitting and you're up close and it's very personal people about their bodies. I think about their face and their hair and their makeup is even a hundred times. When I tell you guys, yeah, Gail is the best to work with as far as hair and makeup. She literally thinks about everything. Like hey, who's this? you. <laughs> oh my gosh yeah no she really is like and i've i've worked with i've i've worked with some people um but literally just yeah you guys are really getting a huge education like gail has uh, i never feel like ooh, i have to work with gail you know um <laughs> And he's got well, to put obviously, on the designer, you know, we get our input from the director or the script, mm -hmm. you know, the storytelling, and you're, it's uphill. You don't have the money. You don't have the time. <laughs> you know, you want to surround yourself with the best people you can. So if I have someone like Danny on my team, I trust, you know, he'll come up with a better idea than I could have ever imagined. Mm -hmm. I'll give him the parameters of something, the time period, the kind of character, and he'll know about, I mean, I learned tonight the bobby pins go that way down. I've been doing it wrong all these years. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought you could get your finger, you know, the little shorter end was on the top so you could grab it. But that's right. So you can always learn something. But the hair people, it makes or breaks the show. When I worked on a soap opera, it's 100%. Oh. The actors are completely, you know, Insane. in the mirror. Every wisp like. of hair, like, it's, it's crazy. Like, the emotions run super high. So you have to be very calm. And also know what you have to know what you're doing. You can't be on set and there's a, a hair problem. Oh, wait, I have to go to the store. There's no time to go to the store. You have to, that's just about a kid. You have to have everything you can possibly Every, imagine. When I say everything, like, I mean, I have mints that the actors like. You know, that's just oh, the type okay. of person I am. Um, you know, and I, I'm also, I, I know, Gail, we're bringing it back and forth from theater and film and all this, but um, I just, I, I, it, it's part of the full look. You know, hair is, I feel it's almost like the, the, the final touch on a costume, you know, oh, absolutely, um, absolutely. you know, I've, <laughs> I've always heard more bad things about bad wigs, <laughs> but a good wig you'll never hear 
or if the wigs will be like, oh, there were wigs in this show, you know? So, or they're like, wow, that's those the best wigs. compliment when people don't realize it's a wig. I think that's the best compliment for everybody. Yeah, that if they would come like do like um, um, tours backstage and like, what is this room of 15 people working so hard at wigs? And they're like, mm, wigs, there's wigs in this show? It's like, yeah, asshole. Um, but yeah. So, <laughs> well, sometimes on a modern show, if you might be asked to root produce their natural hair in a wig correct so that the um, producer can not have to worry about the actor getting you know getting it done all the time i mean every six weeks they would have to get their hair done at least you know and then will the actor want to go through that um it, it it becomes a whole thing and then haircuts as well for the gentlemen you know they are done in-house um i sometimes get asked to do um african-american hair which you know in this stage of industry that we're in, I have a full docket of actors that I have worked with who can be references so that I can barber. Basically, they want to know that I can barber. Um, so it's just more, and it's hair, you know, even though it is a man, um, that look is still a part of, of us and what we design, what Gail sets forth and then what I like, zhuzh. Mm. We did a project together um, for the, Danny does for the Soho House. So it's a trendy oh. little boutique hotel that every, they do a huge Halloween party and a huge New Year's Eve. So I'll get hired, Danny gets hired to do it all the time, hair and makeup, but it's just so, uh, such a challenge because you don't have a set cast list, no. you know, all the bartenders, all the waiters, all the people that work this big event. Plus the clients are very kind of high end and, you know, they expect a lot, you know, so the, the stakes are high, but he'll roll in with like 10 makeup artists and we'll do in one day, like almost 150 people. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to look on my phone for a picture. The queen of hearts was such a spectacular. Oh, yeah. oh. We did this whole um, Tim Burton, you know, so we had, um, Where is that way? Alice, do you have, I'm trying to find that picture. It was so wonderful. But it was like the head manager and he was bald and six foot something. And yeah, had so we could like there. bring it like so far back and like, oh, um, yeah. That I is... had that picture on my phone. It was so great. And my work was only 50%. Danny topping it, that wig and the makeup was out of this world. I mean, he... We really do work together. It is a team. And I uh, I know some people who very much don't work that way, like stay in your lane. Um which even in my own department, like hair and makeup on a television set is completely different departments. Um, so <laughs> yeah, they can get very territorial, but that's why like working with, with Gail, it's just, a, we just have fun. I have fun anyway. I know, I'm sure you guys have giggled and laughed too, because I couldn't imagine being in the class. Quiet. You guys gotta come out of your shell. It's almost the end of the semester. We got like, we're in a pandemic. If you can't laugh now, <laughs> we gotta find something. <laughs> But um, Danny, had a good thing about being territorial, when you freelance, you go to different companies all the time and you walk in as kind of the new person and also being a designer or him, you know, being in charge of the wig look, you know, we get, we're giving a lot of notes and we're like, oh, we really want this or try this. And sometimes you're pushing people that are just punching a time clock. They've been oh. doing that job forever. They don't want to do it in, in a new way or creative way. They don't want to be rushed, you know, so you kind of have to really be a good cheerleader and get their support. So it's not even about what you can do. It's how well, you can train your team and, and it, like it is a you're as effort. good as your like your weakest link, you know, and that is really the truth. Um, and often you didn't hire these people. They come like with, oh. if you're uh, I'm, I'm going out to Aspen this time. Well, both going to Aspen, we hope. So it's just the kind of thing you don't know who you're going to get sometimes. So you really have to like believe in yourself and, and your skills to like show and, and guide people on how it needs to get done. Even if they've never done it that way before and curse you or whatever oh. happens, you just have to really, you know, hopefully push for the right, the best thing for the show. I did a show. I did The Little Mermaid this summer out at Tuacon and I did four different versions of Ursula. Four versions, guys. When I tell you I <laughs> wanted to strangle them, um, the costume designer was on one page. The director was on the other page. The creative staff who hired me was on another page. The wardrobe um, supervisor, not supervisor, like the shop steward had another idea. So that's five different people's opinions. And I cared about the director, you know, pecking order. First, you want Eliza Minnelli. I said, what? <laughs> Ursula? Are... We're in Tuacon. Mind you, I could get shot in a minute from any, like, bullet from these people that come see the show. I, so I had to make literally full on. She was not creative at all. I wanted to do these masks. 
like um, Pris looked in the desert because it was so hot out there to do masks for them and cast their face. And they were not having any at all for this damn show. Um, I even took lace and I put them over the forehead and made bands and we put rhinestones on the lace. So they had like a sparkly glitter like forehead for um, under the sea. She really didn't want it. Yeah. But I had it. So it's a little crazy. It's a little crazy, but yeah. And what's hard when there's changes like that too, yeah. your budget goes out the window. You can't get that money back if you had to build something four times. So, you know, you have to kind of be a good steward of the budget and what's possible. Like everyone has, you know, let's try it and look and see, well, that costs money and time. We don't always have that to be that flexible. And if you have like all these resources, like you, you, can you get it there? First off, if we're working in these little places, you know, around the world, like how can we get it? Is there even a wig store anywhere <laughs> in the vicinity? Or it's or, the holiday and, and they're not open for three days or something. <laughs> or a weekend. Holiday. We had weekend yeah. problems. Like things shut down at like 10 o'clock. I'm like, what? No, I need, <laughs> no. Um, so it, it can get very frustrating. So that for me, meditation works really well. Um, <laughs> I would definitely get some form of bringing you back to center uh, because the world will get really crazy from every every like you will be pulled a hundred different directions even though i only do wigs and makeup or whatever for that i am pulled in a hunt i have people's oh, oh my gosh my aunt's brother's cousin died actress in the chair crying hysterical you know she's on her phone with her boyfriend who she hasn't seen in two weeks you know hormones 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 and then i have you know a key or an assistant who out the window like okay you want my job cool like so it's very like crazy but you also have to be able to stay sane in this industry just in general whatever wherever you're going in the in this industry like do something to, that you're always going to come center but you have to be sensitive you have to realize people's emotions are going to run high and oh. you know you don't want to jump in on the panic train and you just i mean it, it is such a collaborative art form everyone has every department has their priorities and their wish lists and work notes but you just have to work together what's possible and you know we're all human at the end of the day we want it to go really well and be proud of our work you know mm -hmm. yeah i i for me a lot of not it's not about recreating you know like we i get called in a lot to be like we want to recreate what people have done already which is great i can look at a picture and make it happen you know so when we get into the more new works and new arts and stuff like that we get a little bit i think there's more stakes in it and people want to like recreate the wheel um where we don't need to <laughs> If that makes sense. A lot of shows we're hired to do, I guess we talked about expectations and stereotypes. People come in like Ursula is a Disney thing. They've seen the movie. They know what they want to see. You know, there's kind of expectations and you don't want to you want to honor it. Maybe put your own spin or twist on it, but you can't go so far away that it's not recognizable. Oh no, she wasn't recognizable, guys. She was a fashion <laughs> model. She was also thin. She was also like a rocket. I I know if you do look it up, to a con, Ursula. <laughs> it's hysterical. You're gonna laugh. Um, she literally was supposed to be Liza Minnelli with the hat and all. Like, I'll even send you photos because it's hysterical. Um, <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit of how you got your start? Like, how you got interested in wigs? And yeah. So, my hair. mother was a hairdresser. Um, so, we had a little salon in the basement. So, I would play with all her wigs when she was growing up. And we really had a nice like, little setup down there. Um, and then I was a drag queen for a little bit. Holy gosh. Um, so long ago. Um, and that's where I really got into wigs. So like using them, styling them, creating them, building them, stuff like that. And then, um, I went to beauty school during the day, did drag at night, <laughs> got my license. You do have to be licensed to do hair and, um, makeup in a union. Uh, there, this is a union gig actually. I what know. is the union numbers for your union? Our, um, on the East coast, it is local 798 and on the West coast, it's 706. Fun. You can work at both TV and theater that covers. Um, there's something called The Journeyman, and that will cover both TV and theater. When Grandma got into the union, it was theater and journeyman. <laughs> I did not. In my interview, I did not want to be a journeyman. I said, I just want Broadway. Just want Broadway. And um, they they got it. They, they let me in. Huh. Because I could. Oh, anyway. Good luck getting in the unions, kids. Good luck. Um, so from there, I, um, 
I had too much of of the drag. So I worked in a mom and pop shop doing some haircuts. So I really got really good at my barbering. Um, hated it, did makeup. I went to Lancome and worked for them. One of their um, high makeup artists uh, hired me because he knew I did hair to do a bun. Guys, it was a bun for one of the ads. It's a bun, like, like it's about the makeup. So then we got talking and then his roommate at the time was working on Spring Awakening with Leah Michelle and she fired her hairdresser because she got poked in the eye one too many times. He okay. was frantically looking for someone. Um, I got a little phone call. Are you free? I'm like, sure. And that is how I started my gig on Broadway. <laughs> ah. You never look back. Yeah, no, never. Mm -mm. No, mm -mm. I am going to say I did do the secret a little bit. I don't know if it really worked, but we're just going to say it did because... I made Broadway and here I am and here I'm sitting and waiting for the phone to ring. Hopefully some work will come. <laughs> um, so then from there, it's really about your, the quality of work that you're putting out. And then you start swinging is what it's called. So you can go into a show, you'll have the track notes and you'll do someone's track. Does everyone know what a track is? Right. Maybe. It's like you're, if you're doing a show, it's your assignments. Like what, uh, like what happens first? Like at the top of the show, you have to put on, um, each dress will have like their specific uh, what they do the things that they do during the show maybe part of it striking toward the end of the show or something right and same thing with hair we have our own track so you would go down and you can go and fill in for the tracks uh, little funny story every Monday I would go to um, my therapist and the guy who would do Book of Mormon knew that and he would call me literally 10 minutes out of my session and be like, are you free to come in tonight? So it was kind of a running joke. So he would just take off Mondays, basically. So then I would go do his track personally. So what would happen was uh, internally, so internally of the department, the second chair became first chair. And then I came in and did the second chair. Does that make sense? How each so track has So the chair's going to come and get their wig on, like in your studio? Uh, okay. Like at the theater, you know, so I would come in and instead of taking over, you know, the the supervisor's track, I would come in and take over the assistant's track. And the assistant would bump up to be the supervisor, if that makes sense. And I mean, it's done every different way. Or they call you and be like, hey, I don't know you, but I know you can do a show cold. Can you come in and do this show? Ha <laughs> ha, that's fun. That's that. When I tell you, when, mm, that's fun. Being a plus size model doing that. Mm, that's fun. Um, yeah, so knowing um, pinning placement, how to pin on the wig properly, which we really didn't talk about at all. Holy cow, what am I doing? Um, so we have, um, you saw the bobby pins, right? Everyone knows what a bobby pin is over here with the tang at the bottom. So now we have these. The smallest little thing you could see. Um, so yep. this is... Um, I don't even know. I don't even know, guys. Um, I feel like we call them straight pin? pins. Hair pins. Yeah. Hair pins. There we go. <laughs> straight pin is this one. Close. Thank you. Thank you for helping. <laughs> uh, um, so they have one and a quarter and then they have three inch. So they have two different sizes. So the one and the quarters will come in and will basically, I like to do one in that. Pause, please. Look, look what we can do. Oh, we're gonna be we're gonna be a little we're gonna be a little bit um yeah it'll be great all right basically your bobby pins are for your prep and the hair pins are put the wig for the wig on for the wig correct so here we'll just slam the, I like slamming on a wig um so this obviously was not made for this beautiful model what I will do is I will take one hairpin and I will put it up in the front to hold it so it doesn't slip back. And then my next one will come in for the ear tab. And so go you're trying to hit those um, pin curls, right? What we so there's a pin curl under here. So I just went right into it. So that's why the bobby pins are going this way so that these can come in and catch. Does that make sense? So it's just for your thin hair, it might pull out, or a hat's gonna pull it off, or something. Oh, a hat, phew, gone. So it, this is Designers not. I love hats when people hate hats. Oh, it's uh, about... yeah, I I love them on TV. I don't like them on stage. 
Um, so if you can see, I'm coming, in, oh, sorry, coming in on that corner. And then I, depending if this wig is coming off quickly. So this is pinning, I, I call it pinning for Jesus. Um, Cause you never want a wig to come off on your watch um, ever. Oh my God. Ugh. Only happened once in my career guys. So, and then, oh, <laughs> I'm doing it like you need, you don't even know. So the back of the wig, I will take a hairpin, the three inch, come down and scoop it back in. Yay. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side. So here, can you, nope, can't see. So here, coming through, the, so I'm, I'm blocking so I don't stab them to death. And then in. But some dancers do like it really strong and like you're like pinning like every which way. The problem with doing that for a wig, you need to know where all your pins are because if it has to come off. So if we're doing like a quick change and she has to go into another wig, I will know to come back here, pull the nape, take out my two hairpins, right? My two three inches. And now to take off the wig, I can come underneath, swoop out, push those out, and it's off. Huh. Nice. So that was quick, quick change pinning. Because all of the all of the pins were going straight back, so you can slide it right off. If you were putting a wig on a dancer, wig dancer, yeah, like for a Broadway show or something, yeah. and they're moving much more, oh, like, yeah. would you put it on? Would you pin it differently, or like, do you ever use like glue? Is that a dumb question? Um, no, no glue. I would say more for a period piece, or if the wig is never coming off. So if the <laughs> wig is never coming off, yes. Um, Paul Huntley, who I learned from, does not like glue. Um, he doesn't even like hairspray. All right, that's where we're. Mm. Yeah, no hairspray, just um, water. Hmm. Um, nice, but like yes. spirit gum too? No. Spirit. Right, no. you can, yes, but no. Um, he thinks that the wig is made so perfectly that it should be able to lay properly and just put pins in the hairline. He also comes with a wig beautifully styled with three bobby pins and thinking it's going to happen with a hat on it. So he's a little cuckoo. Um, so yes, so you would have a conversation with your dancer and either instead of doing the wrap back, they would do a couple, they would do a full head of pin curls and then you can come in and really anchor the wig down. And then okay. if there's a hat that goes on it, then you can scoop into to those. Um, for Miss Saigon, we actually just used, they were in bikinis. Hmm. Um, so the mic pack couldn't go anywhere. We all wanted it to go in their boobs, but everyone said no. Um, so in the top of the show, we had falls that had a little pocket in it. And it would be four pin curls on top. And we would put the little piece and then we would style the hair over it. So that we wow. could actually, yes, it was. And then the act, the dancers would have to, they had a whole rehearsal of just getting acquainted with that extra, you know, yeah. That so extra, wait, I mean, if you're spotting and turning, spotting, and turning, and it's literally on the top of their head, everything, all the wires, all of this is just literally oh on top of the head. That's hard. If you're doing like a 1920s style or oh. something that's very close to the head, it ruins it so hard. It's the mics are really fashioned, big ones. It's like a cigarette pack up there or something. Yeah. So <laughs> then you kind of try to like, oh, where are we putting the microphone today? And then if they do like double packs, you know, if they're like a lead in the show, you're trying to put two microphone packs on this damn woman's head. Um, I know Patty Lapone likes to have one in her boob and one in her down below. That's where she likes to put hers. Yeah, fun, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, we're just about out of time. Anyone else have a question? Yeah, questions? Cora, Kat, okay. anything? Um, what's been like your favorite show to work on? Like, the wigs? Favorite show? Um, my favorite, I mean, no one has probably ever heard of it, but uh, Leap of Faith was my, my like favorite show. Uh, we had what? so much fun backstage. Like the hair room was impeccable. Like we had such like such a good time. We were just, and it would rain on stage every night for 20 minutes. So every wig would need to be reset every night. Like, full-on monsoon on stage. <laughs> Retards. Um, 
we would have to take off the wigs and put shower caps on so their own hair wouldn't get wet, the actors. And then they would be walking around and it would sound like diapers. Everyone had a diaper on. But they had no microphones because they were getting wet every night. It was, guys, when I tell you, holy cow. But just the energy. It was so much fun. The cast was amazing. Um, it just didn't take off. So we only did 12 performances. That word. That's a shame. Ah, yeah. Good old That's 12 performances. That's show business, y'all. <laughs> what? How about you, Cora? Any questions? No. No, you're like... Uh, mm-hmm. I went to Vegas long time anyway. Good. Yeah. Danny, we all appreciate it. Thank you so much for spending some time yeah. with us. Yeah, yeah any time. Home. We really appreciate it. Yeah, if you have any questions anytime, ladies, you're more than welcome to hit me up on any social media. I'm always there. Um, if you ever Ooh. need anything or have a question. Boy. Awesome. Yeah.